Going on. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Welcome to Central Church. I'm Pastor Michelle Bogtrost, and I'm very glad to be here this morning with you. It may be really, really cold outside, unless it's warmed up in the last hour and a half. No. But it is a warm and wonderful place inside to be together in worship. Welcome to this live stream plus live worship. If you're joining us on the live stream, welcome to you. Of course, we welcome everyone here anytime on Sundays from 8.30 service to 11 o'clock service. Um, we are continuing to avoid all the bad worship practices that um, involve people touching the same things or breaking six-foot distances. We're still taking every possible precaution to keep people safe as we worship. So, and there's plenty of room to spread out in here as well. If you're here in the pews, welcome, and so glad you braved this blustery day to be here. Uh, do remember that we are keeping masks on at all times, unless you're seated up front leading worship. So if you really want to take your mask off, that's great. You can come up and preach. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, maybe not. I don't see anybody storming the front here. Mm -hmm. Keep your mask on at all times, nose, mouth, chin, and please uh, find the brown pad in your pew and fill that out with your contact information. That's part of our protocols for New York State is making sure that everybody completes that with name, contact information in a legible fashion. Please. Thank you. Amber Gaylord is leading worship with me this morning. Cindy Tedeschi is reading scripture. Uh, and by the way, for those of you who like an advanced, advanced peek of the scripture, want to look it up and follow along, it's Psalm 111 today. Sean Stafford is offering his copious gifts of music today on piano, and or on piano not organ. And um, that incredible tech team back there is making the live stream happen and the microphones happen when Michelle doesn't forget to turn hers on. And we have uh, Mark and Megan and Alex and Christopher back there this morning. You are free to add comments to the live stream, whether you're watching online or here in person. Uh, you do need to be logged on through your own YouTube account to do that. <sighs> and so we are, after all those details, gathered to worship together here in this moment. We are in various places, but united in spirit and in heart. We come together now or whenever we're watching it, to worship and to build our faith and our strength for the week ahead. Let's begin our worship with a prayer as Amber leads us. The words should be on the screen. Amazing God, you, you do, do wonderful, wonderful things, big and small, every day. Open us this day to recognize the miracles of life all around us, so that we might stay resilient and ready to create your reign on earth as it is in heaven. We praise you for your continued good works, holding our lives together each day. Amen. We we'll continue our worship together with some special music from Sean Stafford.
time this morning is a video from uh, our Faith Formation Coordinator, Sarah Maroney. Hi friends, it's Sarah again for another children's moment. This month, Laurel and I have been focusing on things that we already do. We want to help you learn how to build yourself up instead of tearing yourself down. God created you and you are good already. So far this month, we have talked about movement, prayer, and silence. This week, let's talk about how to better release your creativity. Last week, we talked about how it is okay to have lots of thoughts in your head that are hard to turn off. Did you know that you can use meditation and prayer to boost your creativity by creating space for new ideas? Have you ever stared at a computer or piece of paper and try to write something, but the words won't come to you? Or maybe you're an artist, but you don't know what to paint. Whatever your creative outlet is, sometimes you sit there, but nothing creative happens. That can be frustrating, right? If you try to force an idea, the more creatively blocked you feel. What if you stopped forcing ideas to come to you and allowed ideas to come to you? What if you could relax and let go of those stressful feelings of pressure and just let your creativity happen? So how is this possible? Just let it go. Let it go and let it happen. Just like Elsa sang about in the movie Frozen. Let it go. When you can do that, the ideas will flow. You can breathe and meditate or even pray to help you create a place for creativity. Give it time, focus on just your breathing, and your mind will quiet down. You are creating a space in your mind for new ideas. Let it go. Once you're able to focus on your breathing and creating a space for something new, go ahead, ask God for what you want. Talk to God, use your own words. You could say something like, God, Please help me to open my mind and creative nature. Remove all blocks to my creativity. Show me or bring me an idea that will help me know what to paint or what to write. Amen. Use your own words. Ask for what you want. Let it go. Breathe. Pray. Ask for what you want. Breathe. Now, just breathe and listen for that still, small voice. This could be a thought, a feeling, a memory, or an image in your head. This is God working through you. Each thought in your head may be exactly the foundation you need for your next creative project. When you let it all go, breathe, meditate, or pray, and talk to God, you will find it easier to relax and open your mind. What an awesome way to release your creativity and let the ideas flow. Dear God, help me to be more like Elsa and let it go. Help me to open my mind and creative nature. Help me to sit still and let you work through me. Amen. The scripture reading today is taken from Psalm 111, the Luke and Psalter translation. Alleluia. I will thank you, God, with all my heart in the meeting of the just and their assembly. Great are your works to be pondered by all who love them. Majestic and glorious are your works, and your justice stands firm forever. You make us remember your wonders. You are compassion and love. You give food to those who revere you, keeping your covenant ever in mind. 
You reveal to your people the power of your actions by giving them the lands of the nations as their inheritance. The works of your hands are truth and justice, and all your precepts are sure, standing firm forever and ever, and carried out uprightly and faithfully. You have sent deliverance to your people and established your covenant forever. Your name is holy and awe-inspiring. Reverence for God is the beginning of wisdom. Those who have it prove themselves wise. Your praise will last forever. This psalm is one of several in what we call the Psalter, the collection of psalms that starts with an alleluia, right off, straight off. It is one of the psalms of joy attributed to King David. And it brings to mind those, those times in our lives when, you know, when we've been waiting for good news and we've gotten it. You know, that moment when the realization that what we need is happening or what we've been waiting for is happening and we have that joy and relief swirling through us and that powerful emotional combination that just shakes our being. And it turns out that that expression, that woohoo, that alleluia, is powerful. It's important for helping us make it through the rest of the times the bad times. In the midst of living with a lot of bad news, we can get depleted in ways that are harmful to our resilience. It's hard to offer our whole hearts in praise even for small things when we've been dragged down by all our troubles and all our trials and our struggles. But offering that praise, offering that hallelujah is what can keep us going when the going gets rough. That's one of the greatest challenges for God's people. We're called to sing praise to God at all times, but it's hard to do it. It's one of our great challenges. Now, I've talked in this, in this church before about thin places, that wisdom understanding from the ancient Celts of the British Isles that names the places where the boundaries between human and divine are thin enough to see through thin enough to pass through. The thin places are places or people or events where it becomes impossible to discern which, which is human and which is divine in the moment, where God starts and humanity ends and, and what's the difference between the two because that, that separation is so small, so fine. An important truth about thin places is that our spiritual lives can become thin places as well if we reflect and pray and work on it. These thin places are fundamentally transitional. They don't just happen in times of peace and quiet. They happen also where change is erupting, where routine is disturbed, where opposing forces come together in conflict and conflict and confluence. The Celts believed, for example, that um, shorelines, where ocean meets land, is always a thin place because there's so much at work there. The same shoreline can be different from one time to the next, yet it is a place where one meets the other, and you can see that, you can barely see where one starts and one stops. That's a thin place. And God can be found in those kinds of places, the times when we leave our regular lives for a while or when we stop and listen and look for opportunities to celebrate God's presence, even in the middle of struggle and pain, like this psalm is doing. That celebration is the hallelujah. That's where we find strength to carry us through the rest of all of it. As the writer of this psalm says, you know, we rejoice because God gives deliverance to God's people. That's an hallelujah. The way you can only see it when our focus is on God. 
But I would say stress and other things get in the way. How many of you have had stress in your life lately? Anybody? Anybody at all? Yeah, right? How many of you, on top of all the stress, like pandemic stress and family stress and work stress and all of that stress, how many of you also have had a major life change in the last year? Yeah? Um, or the last five years? Huge shifts. For so many people, me included, those kinds of disruptions in life can lead to problems way beyond the stress. We can also hit what uh, Leonard Sweet calls faith quakes, feeling like the very foundations of who we are and what we believe are being shaken to the breaking point. We can lose sight of ourselves. And even scarier, we can lose sight of God, not have any clue about how to make things right again. You know, some huge change happens in our lives. Oh, say a global pandemic or something like that, some chaos or crisis with or without our consent, and suddenly we are stressing out, we're losing sleep, we're kicking the dog. We don't know what to do about it. We look back longingly to before that shift, back to a time when everything was in place and we had our way set, and we knew which way was up. We look back to that and we wonder why we're so disoriented now. And at that point, many people enter firmly into denial. Others plant their feet, draw the line, and concentrate all their energy on trying to turn time and events back. Others simply give up, get stuck, and become paralyzed and powerless. I think all of us know somebody in one of those categories over the last 10 months. Many times, all of that is accompanied by feeling like God has abandoned us. Whether it's, it's because we believe that God did this to us in the first place. There are people out there in this world preaching that the pandemic is a pun- punishment for global sin. Or maybe we believe that God doesn't care what happens to us. Or that God simply can't or won't deal with somebody as messed up as I am, you know? Fortunately, though, God is still there. And we often can't see it until we can say hallelujah anyway. No matter what's happening, hallelujah anyway. Through change and chaos and pain and suffering, God comes to us so that we might come to God hallelujah anyway. Offering that hallelujah, offering that praise means letting go. And like Sarah said, I cannot believe two weeks in a row, Sarah says something in the children's time that sets up the sermon perfectly. But it means letting go. Offering up a hallelujah, whether a shout of triumph hallelujah or a hallelujah anyway, it means being vulnerable. It means letting go, even if just for a moment, of all the fear and all the anxiety we're carrying or of our ideas of what the risk or the outcome might be. When we open ourselves that way, when we risk that way, God promises to meet us there because it is in that spot where we have let go of what's holding us because you can't hang on to stuff and say hallelujah at the same time. It's just not possible. When we've let it go and, and come into that place, God meets us there, and that becomes a very, very thin place. We find that even in the midst of the chaos, we are known and beloved and provided for, and that is the beginning of hope. Hallelujah. God meets us and reaches into our lives in those times of turmoil, and we're confronted with a living power and presence that awakens us to a new reality, new life. When the carefully laid plans have disintegrated, when optimism has fled, when the skies are gray, and the earth is shaking, and it feels like the life will never, ever, ever be the same, God is present, even there. 
Every change or turmoil or upset brings with it a place where God can find us and we can find God if we pay attention. It does mean we have to shift our focus from whatever is besieging us and the ways we're held captive by it and look instead for God. Hallelujah anyway. So then our, our challenge becomes to ask and ask and ask, how can I offer a hallelujah even when things are awful? Where is God in all of this? How will God redeem even this change and chaos in my life? We have to be willing to meet God in our hallelujah and trust the promise that God will be there waiting and willing to redeem the situation and make it whole. So I've been thinking this week about Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. You, you know this tune, at least, I'm sure, but Sean's going to play it for us. heard it. Most people never heard it until it was used in the movie Shrek. It was released in 1984 on an album that uh, Cohen's record label didn't want to produce. They, um, they told him uh, at one point, he, he tells the story later, that uh, at one point they said, Leonard, we know you're great, but we, we're just not sure you're that good. The song, uh, as he wrote it, I think it started out with about 80 verses. And it came down to the four that got published. The song begins in the first and second verses with references to David and Samson, both poets, both leaders in the Bible, both deeply flawed in that they had lost sight of God when they began seeing only themselves, began serving only themselves. The second verse refers to both Samson's demise and David's downfall. In the third verse of Hallelujah, and this is, I'm taking some of these quotes from a Rolling Stone article that came out in December 2019. In the third verse of Hallelujah, Cohen builds to the song's central premise, the value, even the necessity of the song of praise in the face of confusion, doubt, or dread. That third verse you say, I took the name in vain. I don't even know the name, but if I did, well, really, what's it to you? There's a blaze of light in every word. It doesn't matter which you heard, the holy or the broken, hallelujah. The value, even the necessity of the song of faith in the face of confusion, doubt, or dread. A blaze of light in every word. That's an amazing line, says Rolling Stone. Every word, holy or broken, 
every word holy or broken. This is the, the fulcrum of the song as Cohen first wrote it. He goes on to say, like our forefathers and the Bible heroes who formed the foundation of Western ethics and principles, we will be hurt and tested and challenged. Love will break our hearts. Music will offer solace that we may or may not hear. We will all be faced with joy and with pain. But Cohen is telling us without resorting to sentimentality, not to surrender to despair. Critics may have fixated on the gloom and doom of his lyrics, but this is his offering of hope and perseverance in the face of a cruel world. Holy or broken, there is still hallelujah. Cohen said when the album was released, it's a joyous song. He said, I like very much that last verse. And even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord of song with nothing on my lips but hallelujah. The world is full of conflict, full of chaos, full of things that can't be reconciled, Cohen has said, but there are moments when we can transcend the dualistic system and reconcile and embrace the whole mess. And that's what I mean by hallelujah. That regardless of the impossibility of the situation, there is a moment when you open your mouth and you throw open your arms and you embrace the thing and you just say, hallelujah, blessed be the name. That is powerful. In the midst of our turmoil, can we find the moment where we can open our mouth and throw open our arms and embrace the thing and just say, hallelujah, blessed is the name. I love that line, just as Cohen did. And even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord of song with nothing on my lips but hallelujah. Hallelujah, anyway. May it be so for all of us in these trying and chaotic times. Hallelujah anyway. Amen. And we come to prayer hopefully with a, a sense that it is about a conversation in a relationship. That prayer is not a time for us to sit God down and tell God what's what and what we need and what's supposed to happen today. But a time where we can let go of self and cares and preoccupations and, and be in the presence to enter a thin place between God and ourselves and be in relationship. So we invite you, if you're on the live stream, to offer your prayer requests in that chat. You you are lifting them at that moment. We may not be announcing them, any or all of them, as we pray together here. Be mindful that you are, you are lifting those prayers as you type. Also be mindful that they are public if you are typing them into the live stream. Here in the sanctuary, there will be time to offer you the prayers of your heart as well. John.
We do have some sadness to report this morning. Um, we, are, we are in prayer of sympathy and support for Larry Jackson on the la loss of his mother, Pearl. She was 96 years old and passed on Monday. And also, we found out yesterday that Mel Livingston has passed. Um, he died on Friday. And, you know, Mel and Norma, long-standing members of this church and um, involved in so many things, but Mel has passed. And um, on top of that, the whole family, Elaine and the daughters, everyone, um, and Norma have COVID as well. So it's, it's just a terribly tumultuous time for this family, so please be in prayer for each of them. We're also celebrating that Mary Abley and Debbie Henderson have birthdays today, so happy birthday to them. And uh, if you know them, even if you don't, send a little card, email, text, whatever, the same as with the prayer program. Um, those folks reach out and touch and connect, remind people that they are loved. We've got some prayers coming on the live stream as well, and... Um, just know that those prayers are being raised as well. I'm going to start us with a time of silence. To sit and to find that space and to take a risk and be vulnerable and open to God. In the silence, space and time become thin. Holy One, today we offer the prayers of our hearts, the deepest needs of our spirits. We come into this space and time and your presence. We offer today a prayer of St. Brendan. Lord, I will trust you. Help me to journey beyond the familiar and into the unknown. Give me the faith to leave old ways and break fresh ground with you. Christ of the mysteries, can I trust you to be stronger than each storm in me? Do I still yearn, yearn for your glory to lighten on me? I will show others the care you've given me. I determine amidst all uncertainty always to trust. I choose to live beyond regret and let you recreate my life. I believe you will make a way for me and provide for me if only I trust you and obey. I will trust in the darkness and know that my times are still in your hand. I will believe you for my future, chapter by chapter, until all the story is written. Focus my mind and my heart upon you, my attention always on you without alteration. Strengthen me with your blessing and appoint me to the task. Teach me to live with eternity in view. Tune my spirit to the music of heaven. Feed me and somehow make my obedience count for you. Holy One, help us into the Alleluia, into the space where we can Shout with celebration, a hallelujah from our hearts. Or if we're in times of trial <clears throat> and pain, help us to find our hallelujah anyway. We come to you in prayer, longing for relationship with you, longing for peace and comfort and healing and hope. Today we bring so many with us into that longing. Our family, our friends, 
people we know, people we barely met, people we've seen on a prayer chain here and there, people in our own homes, persons who need your strength and comfort and hope and healing. Hear us as we lift each one to you now as we speak their names aloud. Daisy. Kristen. Help each one find their hallelujah too. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. For we ask each one in the name of Jesus the Christ, the one who teaches us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy Thy will will be be done, done on earth earth as as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass trespass against against us. And lead lead us us not into temptation, but deliver but us from, from evil. evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the, power, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. We'll take a moment and bless our offering with a prayer. Awesome God, you sent Jesus to teach people firsthand the power of your love, grace, and authority. Jesus washed away unclean spirits and performed countless other miracles so that even the faithless would experience your love. You call us to be mindful and vigilant of the extraordinary miracles that you continue to work in our lives today. May this offering undergird ministries that show others your miraculous love, grace, and authority. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we'd love if you'd um, continue to think about ways to connect with ministry and with church um, during the week ahead. One of those ways is to become an evangelist. Does that sound scary? Really all that is is, you know, post that you came to worship on Facebook. Post the link to the live stream out on your social media platforms if you're on any. Um, You can do that every week and it's really okay. That is the easiest form of evangelism there is. If you're on Facebook, remember to follow Central's page. You will get updates and information that way. Also, if you sign up for our email list, you will get a weekly update with everything that's going on and ways to connect um, with what's going on here. Tomorrow evening, our Monday evening book study continues at 7.30 on Zoom. We're starting a new book. It's Phyllis Tickle's The Great Emergence. And it's a very accessible book. I think it's meaty and um, profoundly uh, meaningful for this day and time. If you've thought about coming to the book study and just haven't yet, this is a very good book to start on. So I hope you'll consider it. The Zoom link will be in the weekly email tomorrow, the weekly century tomorrow. And uh, I hope you'll join us. If you haven't got the book yet, that's okay. Uh, Folks come all the time without having read the stuff for the week. So um, we'll spend three weeks on that book, and I hope you'll join in with that. 10 o'clock each Wednesday, Soul Care happens on Zoom as well. It's a time of fellowship and devotion and connection, and I hope you'll take advantage of that. Can you help us out with the blood drive? Uh, Yes, the uh, blood drive would be... Saturday. Sa- this yeah. this Saturday, I think yeah. it is, right? Oh, yes. Do you not have the thing? This upcoming Sorry. Saturday. I don't think I do. I did okay. see it. There's a community blood drive this, uh, this Saturday here at Central. I, say, I did see it on Facebook. It was so somewhere, was... yeah. Um, if you would like to give blood, the Red Cross is always, always in need and is asking people to give blood. Even in these COVID times, they're practicing super safe protocols. You do need to make an appointment. You can't just walk in to give blood in these COVID times. Um, So please do that. But also there's another piece to that. Central is sort of famous in the area for offering food to folks who come and give blood. And we used to do a whole full breakfast, but we can't do that uh, in this particular season. 
We do offer snacks, though, and Knud Hansen has been making that happen for the last long time um, and would really love to have some help with that. So if it strikes you that that might be something you could do to help uh, prepare uh, continental-type things for folks to eat after the blood drive, that's once every six weeks or so. It's not an onerous task, and Knud would be happy to show you the ropes. So if, if that strikes you as something that might be fun to do, it's a Saturday morning every six weeks. Call the office or call Knud if you might be interested. It'd be a great way to break in and meet folks, and uh, if you've never done anything church-related before, this is a, a good thing to help with. Uh, 10 o'clock on Sundays is our adult education and fellowship time. That's on Zoom or in the dining room as well. And uh, let's see... For the next two weeks, it'll just be fellowship time, but we're picking up again with the adult study component on the 21st of February, so I hope you'll join in. Hope at Central is having a worship experience this Saturday at 7 o'clock on the live stream only. Uh, we are talking about love, sex, and relationships. Won't that be fun? Also, next week in worship here at 11 o'clock in person is the Love Feast um, Bring a snack, bring a beverage. If you are online, make sure you have a snack and a beverage somewhere handy that you can grab as we begin worship together. We will celebrate the Wesleyan love feast in the Moravian tradition. Are there other things that I missed? Uh, we wanted to also lift up that our Shepherd's Supper this week served 146 guests. So we're still doing that every Thursday, serving to-go dinners um, <coughs> from starting from 4.30 to 6. So that's still a ministry that's going strong even through, even through the COVID time. We're still helping those in need of meals. And looking for volunteers, if we can find some, right? We can always use volunteers for that, Maggie. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Prepping. There's all sorts of ways to participate that, and we can hook you up with someone who can tell you how if you want to contact the church office. Um, so there are, there, are, there are ways to be in touch with your faith and active in your faith through the week, and I hope you'll take advantage of one or more of them in this coming week. But as you go into this day with the storm a-coming, hunker down, batten up the hatches, Stay safe, stay well as you go into this week and into the world around us. May you find the thin places where you can offer your hallelujahs. May your life become that hallelujah. Know that God meets you there, whether it's hallelujah or hallelujah anyway. God will meet you there. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs>